Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're discussing a, I guess, somewhat intriguing, but also potentially somewhat controversial study involving tardigrades and quantum entanglement. Or I guess, in some sense, the most clickbaity scientific paper you can technically write. But it is an interesting paper, and it is an interesting analysis, because it actually discovers something else about tardigrades, and also teaches us a little bit more about what these creatures are technically capable of. The question is, does it actually involve quantum entanglement, and what exactly were scientists trying to achieve here? So let's discuss this paper, but let's start with the idea of, so what is quantum entanglement, in a nutshell. There are actually quite a lot of videos on quantum mechanics that I've made previously, and they should be popping up somewhere right there at some point, and in most of them I do go through some of the details of how all of this works. Specifically, it actually talks about some of the discoveries and some of the creations from various scientific teams that were able to create various really interesting quantum devices where things basically just don't work in the way that they work in the classical world. A lot of things here become very, very counterintuitive and are extremely difficult to explain, but have been scientifically proven over and over. But when it comes to quantum entanglement itself, the concept here is not super difficult to understand. It essentially involves either two particles or even sometimes a group of particles that become sort of connected to one another in such a way that their quantum state or their properties cannot be described individually anymore. Which means that by changing the property, any of the properties of one of these particles, you sort of automatically change the properties of all of the other particles connected to this initial particle. And this usually happens independent of how far away the particles are from one another or essentially, to quote Einstein, spooky action at a distance. And this particular process has been recreated many, many times, but it's usually something that involves really, really tiny subatomic particles, or in most cases, something that's extremely cold, cooled down to like absolute zero, or in some other cases, lasers. As a matter of fact, photon-based or laser-based entanglement is really the most common way today to create a pair of entangled particles, in this case, photons, and is actually even used practically for various cryptography reasons. In this case, you can actually create a cryptographic quantum key, and if someone is trying to steal this key, just by nature of quantum mechanics, by changing one of these entangled particles, you automatically change everything inside the cryptographic message. But you can check out more about this in one of the previous videos that should be popping up there. And although entangling individual particles has been done many times, in the last few years the scientists have also achieved macroscopic entanglement, basically entangling larger and larger objects. For example, in one of the papers from the last few years, the scientists reported entangling a vibrating drum-like structure connected to an extremely cold atomic cloud that was basically changing its spin as the drum was oscillating which by definition was that spooky action at a distance. And these were large objects containing many different atoms, so this was an example of a macroscopic quantum entanglement. On top of this, one of the most important chemical reactions on the planet, the one that basically produces a lot of things for life here on the planet, photosynthesis, is believed to be directly connected to the quantum entanglement of photons of light with the chemical reaction happening inside a typical chloroplast. Or, in other words, photosynthesis might be directly dependent on this principle of quantum entanglement when the photons enter the leaves and when they start interacting with other structures. Some of the scientists in previous studies have been able to prove this, but there are still some scientists that don't truly believe this just yet. Nevertheless, one of the papers claims to have actually entangled living bacteria with some of this light, with at least two separate papers that you can find in the description below, claiming to have observed quantum entanglement of photosynthesis inside a photosynthetic bacteria that was then actually controlled and modified. So in other words, in the last few years, the scientists might have actually found a way to control quantum entanglement even inside living organisms. Now, because these are really big claims, not everyone obviously agrees with this just yet, but these are interesting propositions. But the most recent study took this possibly a step further, and I'm saying possibly because here a lot of scientists really don't think that this was true entanglement. They might have entangled a tardigrade, an actual animal that we are all familiar with because it's basically one of the most resilient organisms on the planet. We've discussed these organisms before in some of the previous videos you might want to check out, 
And the scientists have already used tardigrades for a lot of different reasons in science, including seeing how much they can actually survive by shooting them out of a cannon and trying to see if they actually survive the collision. Oh, and by the way, just to clarify, they don't actually survive all of this by being in this state. They do change or transform into what's known as the ton state. It's basically a shriveled version or sort of like a seed-like version of the actual organism. One of the papers in the description shows us the difference between the actual tardigrade, the living one, and the one that's in the ton state, the state where usually they're able to survive extreme radiation, extreme temperature, and of course outer space. And so in this paper that, as always, you can find in the description below, the scientists are wanting to find out if a multicellular animal like tardigrade could potentially become entangled with a previously entangled qubit that's connected to something else. And since this was successfully demonstrated in bacteria in those previous studies I mentioned, specifically by showing that the light entangled inside photosynthetic bacteria seems to be connected to the light that's completely independent in a different area, here the scientists decided to replace the bacteria with a tiny ton tardigrade. Although you might already see the problem with this experimental design. First of all, tardigrades are not photosynthetic, so there's really nothing for them to entangle on the inside. In other words, they're not going to be connecting to any photons of light, and they're not really going to be using anything from the outside that can then be modified for entanglement. But more about this a little bit later. Well, let's discuss what the scientists did afterwards. They then subjected these little guys to some of the lowest temperatures they've ever experienced and some of the highest pressures possible. And that's basically because that's the only way they can actually create those qubits that are then entangled with one another in order to create quantum effects. And following this, as you can see in this image, these little guys were then integrated into two quantum entangled electric circuits. And the main purpose of this test was to see if by changing one of the qubits, or quantum bits, we would actually observe a change in the second quantum bit and possibly also the tardigrade itself. And here they chose three different tardigrades, apparently coming from somewhere in Denmark, froze them, shrunk them in size, put them into those circuits and observed the results. And afterwards, they took the tiny tardigrade, placed it near qubit B, as you can see in this diagram right here, observing a slight shift in frequency inside the qubit. This was obviously expected, this is just classical electronics here, simply because tardigrade is, well, it's water, there's a lot of water on the inside, so this water most likely changed the frequency of the qubit. They then took both qubit B and tardigrade and were able to couple it to qubit A that's uh, visible right here making these quantum bits essentially entangled and dependent on one another. And then when the frequency of one of the qubits was affected, the entire system seems to have been affected as well, including the tardigrade, at least to some extent. And to scientists in this paper, this implied that this was some sort of a three-part entangled system, with the tardigrade essentially becoming part of the entanglement itself. And then, following the experiment, they spent approximately 17 days trying to warm these guys up in order to bring them back to life. Unfortunately, only one of the three came back to life, and thus became the record holder for surviving the coldest temperatures a tardigrade has ever survived, and also some of the highest pressures as well. Although here the claim is that it's also the first ever survivor of a quantum entanglement, and essentially the first ever animal to have been quantumly entangled. Quantumly, is that a word? It is now. But the thing is, most of the scientists involved in other quantum studies don't really agree with this assessment. They do agree with the fact that the tardigrade survival is definitely impressive, but in this case, by definition, quantum entanglement did not actually happen inside a tardigrade. In other words, no specific property of the tardigrade itself was responsible for any of the other quantum effects in other qubits. With basically almost everyone agreeing that what the scientists here essentially did was use the tardigrade as a kind of a dielectric, which would be just a classical electrical part added to a circuit, which could obviously easily change in frequency, but nothing here is quantum physics. All of this is just classical physics and classical electronics. On top of this, there's obviously quite a lot of various types of quantum entanglement happening inside the molecules of the tardigrade either way, and actually all of the molecules inside our body as well, and that's independent of all of the other effects that we're observing from, for example, photosynthesis. Quantum mechanics and quantum entanglement is all over the place, it's actually an extremely natural process, but it doesn't mean that the scientists in this paper achieved any of this. And specifically, in order to actually entangle a tardigrade with, I guess, something else, you would want to have an isolated system 
with essentially tardigrade possibly affecting the effects of something entirely different, such as, for example, the aforementioned uh, drum-like structure. That would be an example of an actual tardigrade being entangled with something else. But by putting it inside a circuit that was basically two qubits, most scientists would agree that this is not an example of an actual quantum entanglement of an animal species. It's definitely interesting, it's definitely a little bit different, and definitely involves cool concepts such as tardigrades and quantum mechanics, but the claim here is not entirely correct. And you can actually read more about this in one of the blogs in the description below. At the end though, what it did show us is that, as I mentioned, tardigrades are just really tough. And they seem to be okay being placed in a lot of really extreme conditions. Which is actually why one of the other studies that I was going to mention but never got to talk about, the study that you can find right here and also in the description below, has also suggested that tardigrades would be perfect astronauts for some of the first interstellar missions, including potential missions to the nearby Proxima Centauri. It's definitely something we'll discuss in some of the future videos, but for now just remember that no matter what we throw at tardigrades, they seem to come out okay, uh, for the most part. And they also seem to be all over the place, there's probably a bunch of them right outside of your window. Anyway, on that note, check out some of the previous videos I mentioned, all of the studies in the description below, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about science, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, I'll see you tomorrow, stay wonderful, and as always, bye bye. So if I ever finish that quantum physics book and start doing some kind of a quantum physics study, I'm going to come up with a study that's going to be about quantum teleportation of frozen tardigrades. Now that's going to get some attention. That's going to get me some clicks.